So once again today, I'm going to talk about a lot of Israeli news that's going on because chaos is coming. I'm also going to get to some comments of the day and we'll hang out. My name's Tom. You're watching the Watchman River channel. And as I do, you know, every single day, I'll remind you I'm not a prophet. I'm not a pastor and I'm not even a great teacher. I'm just a dude that loves the Lord. I love talking about the Lord and I love hanging out with you. So get comfortable, grab yourself something to eat or drink. Maybe you want a cup of coffee or maybe some tea or you know what? Here, have a cappuccino and a turkey leg or grab whatever you like to eat and drink when you're hanging out with an old friend and a fellow servant of the Lord. Let's get busy. So, you know, we're watching in real time. We're watching all these different things happen in Israel. And, you know, if you're not paying attention and you don't understand Bible prophecy and you just don't care, it looks like Israel's just living their normal existence. But man, when you understand Bible prophecy and you pay attention to what's going on in the news, every aspect of Bible prophecy is coming alive. And I'm telling you right now that it's a boiling point there. It's at a boiling point and it's not, it's not sustainable what's going on in Israel. We are going to see some serious things soon if we're even here, because I'm telling you the pre-tribulation rapture is close. It's very, very close. I've been coming down to this river for 11 months. And I'll tell you right now, I would be shocked if I was coming here 11 months from now. So when you ask me in the comments, well, how soon is soon? I, is that soon? I would be shocked if I was here 11 months from now doing these videos. That's how much chaos I'm seeing heading toward Israel that fits in perfectly with Bible prophecy. Let's get to some of the Israeli news. Let's see what's going on over, over there, okay? Uh, this is from Israel Radar, Israeli National Security Advisor in a message to Iran. Israel can defend itself on its own and the Americans understand it. Israel will never accept Iranian nuclear weapons. That's a smack in the face right there. <laughs> Talk about a warning to Iran, you know? We, we're we're not going to put up with you much longer. And the Americans understand it. In other words, we'll, we'll go at you alone if we have to. Thank goodness the Americans are there a little bit. You know, they're, they're doing some tests with them and hanging out with them. But I wouldn't put, you know, I'd put my trust in God, not, not the Americans at this point, to be, to be frank. Okay, I was just frank. <laughs> uh, sudden meetings point to action against Iran's nuclear program. There have been interesting top-level visitors that have not gained massive media attention, but are very significant. Following on the heels of the U.S. Secretary of State to Israel came the Biden administration National Security Advisor, Jake Sullivan, then the U.S. Military Chief of Staff, General Milley. And now, as I share this news with you, the U.S. Defense Chief Lloyd Austin is meeting Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. He's also meeting the IDF Chief of Staff, Herzi Halevi, and the head of the Israeli Mossad. They are meeting in a hangar at ben, uh, ben Gurion Airport. This is not a courtesy visit. Things are happening as a result of the admission that Iran has fooled the world, but not Israel, and that they have reached at least 84% uranium enrichment, and the Pentagon admitted that Iran could race to a weapon-grade material within a 12-day period. So, interesting, they're all meeting with Israel because they know how serious this is. This is very, very serious, beside all of other, all the other problems that Israel is having within their, within their border. And we're seeing crazy things. This is from Amir Sarfati's Telegram channel. The U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin just landed in Israel, this was a few hours ago, and is holding meetings with Israel's uh, Prime Minister and Defense Minister. These urgent meetings are coming side by side with unprecedented joint military exercises of the Israeli and American Air Forces. Iran is very nervous, as they should be. Uh, also from Amir, an Arab blogger who follows the movement of aircraft in the Middle East notes unusual movement of Israeli fighter jets alongside Israeli transport planes and American refueling planes on their way to an American base in Spain. 
According to the blogger, the distance between Israel and Spain is the same distance that's between Israel and Iran, only in the opposite direction. They're preparing for something, and I really believe it's going to happen suddenly. We're just going to hear about it one day. They're doing it. You know, and I, it's just going to be interesting to see how it comes about. And if we're even here to see it, because I think we're that close to the rapture. I'm looking up every day, every single day. Israeli ex-commander says better to attack Iran now rather than later. Uh, former commander of Israeli's Navy, Eliezer Muram, has said that Iran is on the threshold of obtaining nuclear weapons and it is better to attack now rather than later. He added the moment to jump from threshold to holding nuclear weapons will be very, very short. And therefore, I think the time to attack the clock is ticking and we will have to do it sooner rather than later. Sooner, it means in the upcoming year. It's going to happen this year. I really believe that. Also, on the uh, Israel is engaging four Muslim nations to expand the Abraham Accords. This is another interesting one. Israel is working to expand the Abraham Accords with four other nations. Foreign Minister Eli Cohen is working to normalize ties with uh, Mauritania, Somalia, Niger, and Indonesia, sources said. So that's growing those Abraham Accords. A lot of Bible prophecy happening. Uh, Hamas refuses to agree to calm and threatens a new escalation. Seems like a daily event lately with them. Egypt and Qatar are continuing their efforts to mediate between Israel and Hamas in an attempt to prevent a deterioration into a new round of fighting. But Hamas is not ready to commit to this. They're never ready. And this is a warning of an, and is warning of an imminent military escalation. So does it surprise you that Hamas doesn't want to talk peace talks? No, they're all rising up. All those warring factions within Israel are rising up daily. We're watching it happen. I don't know if you guys heard about this, but last night, Russia did some heavy attacks on Ukraine, across Ukraine. A Russian missile barrage slams into cities across Ukraine. Russia unleashed a massive rocket attack and that hit critical infrastructure and residential buildings in 10 regions of Ukraine. The country's president said Thursday, with officials reporting at least six deaths in the largest such nighttime attack in three weeks. President Zelensky said the barrage that came while many people slept and knocked out power in cities across the country was an attempt by Moscow to intimidate the Ukrainians again. Just pray for the Ukrainian people and pray for the Russian people. That's all I can tell you. I don't get involved in the politics of this. I just, I don't, I just, we live in a land of lies and deception. And no matter how much I try to really figure out what's going on, I just get conflicting story after conflicting story. The mayor of Kiev reports widespread disruptions in power supply within the city. And uh, thermoelectric Kiev Energo or Energo number five thermoelectric power plant is smoking heavily after being targeted this morning. Uh, the mayor of Kharkiv reports that as a result of the rocket, rocket attacks, there is no water and no heat in the city. The metro and other electric transport were also stopped. So once again, they're going through a lot over there. Pray for the people, you know, pray for the people. Um, Iran has sent Russia over 100 million rounds of ammo. Plans to send more, says a report. Russia is believed to be using the ammunition to replenish supplies expended during its invasion of Ukraine. Iran and Russia are buddy, buddy, buddy. They are buddy, buddy. That's why we live in such fascinating times. Iran is gearing up to attack Britain and the West. This is according to the Telegraph. Tehran is close to attaining nuclear weapons as well as ballistic missiles capable of hitting the heart of Europe. I don't know what's going to happen with Iran. I, I just... All I know is that Jesus is in control and we look to him and we trust in him and he's not worried about any of this stuff. He's not worried about any of it. A few things on domestic issues here. Not sure if you heard this one. This was yesterday. A freight train derailment in West Virginia is spilling diesel fuel into the new river. 
Every day. Every day they happen. Weird fires. Weird derailments. Next we've got, from yesterday, a large fire breaks out at a multi-story oil rig with hazardous materials in Mobile, Alabama. I don't know what this is about, but I know it's happening every day. Is it on purpose, by design? It could be. I don't know. I don't know. Another one, major warehouse fire in Omaha, Nebraska. Large plumes of smoke are filling the sky. It's like the entire country is just being poisoned. I think Satan knows his time is short and he's using some pretty evil people to do his will. Widespread civil unrest is suddenly erupting all over the world. Angry citizens are taking to the streets all over the world, and often they are lashing out in wild and unpredictable ways. The eruptions of civil unrest that you will read about below are all happening for different reasons, but they all have one thing in common. People are deeply frustrated with the direction that things are going. That's why they're going to look for the Antichrist. And they have lost faith in the ability of their elected representatives to solve their problems. Doesn't this sound biblical? Unfortunately, this is just the beginning. Yeah, they're going to look for a solution. It's going to be interesting. Oh, I wanted to show you there was something else here. Oh, did you hear about this? The first after-school Satan Club in Colorado is set to launch at Paonia K-8. through it's happening. It starts Monday, I believe. The first ever after-school Satan Club in the state of Colorado will launch on Monday at Paonia K-8. through The after-school club billed as a focus on free inquiry and rationalism is the product of the Satanic Temple. Tell me we're not in the end days. And man, the churches in that area, if they're just being quiet about this, Shame on them, because I'd be starting so many Christian clubs after school that same day. And I would be like, eschatology club, Jesus is coming soon club, the rapture's coming soon. Come on, kids. I, you, how, how much do you want to make a bet they wouldn't allow that class to be held? But the, the Satan club, that's fine. But man, I hope those churches aren't just sitting there being quiet about this. I really hope they're not. All right, here's a crazy story of the day. This is just crazy, okay? I can't even... My brain could explode thinking the stuff that's going on in the world today. Listen to this. Sign of the end times? A rain of worms fall onto the people of Beijing. The people of Beijing, China were going about their day when out of nowhere a storm of worms began to rain from the sky. <laughs> the Chinese capital city experienced the odd weather phenomenon earlier this week. A video showing the thousands of worms falling to the streets of China has gone viral, leaving many asking if this is a sign of the end times. Here's a picture of a car. See, I thought when I heard this, they were little tiny worms, but no, they're, they're pretty sizable worms. <laughs> How wild is that? <laughs> Oof. I'll tell you, when I read this, all I could think of is, you know, I could handle it if it rained kittens or something from the sky, but worms, I, I no, no thank you, no thank you. I'll take the rain of kittens. <laughs> They're cute and furry. <laughs> worms, no. <laughs> Let's get to some comments of the day, shall we? Panoptic Seeker. I was a smoker for 47 years and had no intention of quitting because I liked smoking. I gave it up for a Sabbath fast, and to my surprise, our Heavenly Father took the urge and need away. Wow. I remain smoke-free for His glory. Jesus died in His love for us, and His gift is timeless. Oh, amen. That's a great comment. He just took it away. That's, that's incredible. That's incredible. I love Jesus. Been waiting since 2012, and now I'm 21, and more ready to leave now than ever. I've been depressed since the pandemic, 
And the Spirit has lifted me up daily ever since coming back to Christ. Thank you for the engagement, everyone, even those in the comments. Your praise reports lift me up. Praise God. Well, you just lifted us up. 21 years old, waiting for Jesus to return. Doesn't that give you older people just joy? I love, I can't tell you. I love, I love really young people that love the Lord. Just that, you know, it's beautiful. You hang in there, kiddo. He is coming very soon. Roberta Feynman or Feynman. Hello, Tom. I don't know about everyone else. I am so ready to go home. I know that every day we are closer to the rapture. The feeling of oppression is getting so heavy some days, even from my family, who I love so much, praying for them to come to Jesus. Amen, Roberta. Yeah, it's these are hard days. They're hard days. But it's not a time for us to give up. You know, when the finish line is in view, you, you try to give it your all, right? If you're running in a race and you see that finish line, it's not the time to like, well, I'm just going to sit and rest a few minutes. You know, no, you kind of like go into overdrive and go do your best to get to that finish line. Brian Cardoza. Hi, Watchman River family. I can think of no better way to honor Jesus and his finished work on the cross than to receive him as your Lord and Savior and to serve him. Thank you, Jesus. There is no better way, Brian. You're right about that. Praise God. Thank you for that. Joan Watkins. This is a good one. I like this. To quote Hal Lindsey, Romans 3.3 3 tells us unbelief will not nullify the faithfulness of God. I think this can also apply to the rapture. Just because people scoff, don't believe it. That doesn't stop God's timetable to rapture the church. The signs Jesus said to watch for are so intense, it defies logic to think this world will just carry on. This is our blessed hope. You're right about that, Joan. It is our blessed hope, and it will not be taken from us. No mocker or scoffer is going to take away my joy from saying Jesus is coming soon to rapture his church, the people that belong to him. That, to me, is the most joyful thing I can say because I believe it. I believe it's so soon. And just judging by how much the mockers and scoffers are rising up, how many more there are, tells me, yeah, they, they're mad. Because this is truth. This is truth. Jesus is coming soon to rapture the church. Tom Dustin. Great message today, Tom. You struck a chord with me when you mentioned how the Lord just takes things away, like music and beer. I know what you mean about no longer having the desire for certain things as in the past. It's just not what I desire anymore. I don't miss it. I got rid of hundreds upon hundreds of recordings I had, and now mostly listen to Christian music, where there are truly some incredibly talented musicians. I can go months without a beer these days, which I'm sure some of my old friends would find hard to believe. The Holy Spirit is alive in me now, and I have never felt more at peace. I understand exactly what you're saying, Tom. I had the same desires taken from me. And uh, not, and I'm not, and I think Tom would agree with me. I'm not judging anyone who still listens to whatever you want to listen to. That's between you and God. That's why I always say you live your convictions and preach Christ. You know, you don't push your convictions on other people because we're free in Christ. And some people can listen to all kinds of music and they're giving glory to the Lord, and it's not a problem for them. Other people, you know, I wasn't even looking for the Lord to take away my love of classic rock music. I wasn't looking for him to do that. It was just one of the fruits of the Spirit that he gave me. One of the fruits of the Spirit that he gave me is, all of a sudden, it just didn't appeal to me. That's all. It just didn't appeal to me. Caden Wolf. Hey, Tom, I'm 18 years old and have been watching for the rapture since I was 14. Recently, I've been diagnosed with schizophrenia, which conflicts with my religious beliefs, but I am always a, but I always remember that Jesus Christ is king. I'm very tired and worn out and have been the past year. I feel the rapture is so close. It's almost as if God is yelling it in my ear. Wow. You know what blew me away about this comment from Caden? There were 50 replies to this comment, and most of them were just people saying, I'm praying for you, Caden. You know, this 18-year-old kid, 
so beautiful. You keep clinging to Jesus. And you have many people praying for you now because you had the courage to leave that comment. Beautiful. A.K. Beater, 54. Prayers for the family to stay strong in these troubling times as we wait for our Lord to come get us. Keep the faith and smile because we know we are saved. Let others wonder and ask what we have to be happy about. That's, I love that. Yeah, the more you show... The more you show happiness and love, especially in these crazy days, the more people will say, how can you be happy when the world's falling apart? And that's your opportunity. You don't have to, you don't have to like start saying, you're going to hell if you don't. <laughs> you don't have to start with that. See, Jesus is my Lord. You know, he died for my sins and I know I don't have to be afraid of anything. You know, we are in troubling times right now. Troubling times. Many people my age who believe in a pre-tribulation rapture, many of them have said, I never thought it would get this bad. I never thought we would see this many things going on in the end times. But here we are. Here we are. And if you're reacting to all this stuff with joy, it's pretty amazing. But our God is good. Jesus is good. He's not worried one bit about all the stuff that's going on. Not one bit. He is getting the, the marriage supper of the Lamb prepared. He went away 2,000 years ago to prepare a place for us. And he's coming back to take us there. Man, who'd want to miss out on that? The one who spoke and nothing became everything. Jesus Christ, the one who spoke with the power of his words, he created everything. He's gone to prepare a place for us and he's promised to come back and take us there. What's more beautiful than that? I don't understand how people can reject Jesus or just say, I don't need that. They just don't know about it. And that's why we have to tell them about it. We have to say, you're not understanding. You're not understanding. The Bible speaks about this love that we can't comprehend. It surpasses our understanding that God has for us. But God has so much love for us that he sent his only begotten son on a mission and the mission ultimately was to die for us because he loved us so much we have sin we're all sinners and it separates us from God God can't look at sin and if you have one sin in your life God can't look at that he can't look at it he's perfect he's holy set apart he's different he's God but he had a plan to send his only begotten son to die and shed blood. Because without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. It's been that way since the creation started. When Adam and Eve fell and ate from that tree they weren't supposed to eat from, God sacrificed an animal and covered them with the skin of it. From there, right from the beginning, right there, it was all about there is no remission of sin without blood being shed. So God sends his only begotten son down here, ultimately to get nailed to a cross, to shed blood, to cover our sins. He was without sin. He never sinned once. He was an innocent man. He was 100% God and 100% man. He was 100% innocent. But he did it because he loves us so much. He purchased the whole field to get the treasure out of it. And he refers to us as that treasure. Why does God treasure these sinful creatures that we are? It's hard to comprehend, but he does. And he loves us enough to die for us. But some of you are going to hear this and just go like, I don't need that baffles my mind because Jesus is real 
and he's alive again. After he got nailed to the cross and shed that blood, he died. His last words were, it is finished. Sin had been paid for. His mission was accomplished. And they buried him in a tomb. And on the third day, he rose again and he's coming back. That's the gospel. That's the good news. But some will hear that and say, I just don't need that. And the weird thing is some will say like, no, I believe Jesus. I believe Jesus, you know, was on the earth. I believe he died. And, you know, I think he thought he was dying for our sins, but I just don't. You know, that's all it was. That's the end of the story. It's like, if that truly was the end of the story, we wouldn't be talking about it 2,000 years later. I guarantee you, we wouldn't be talking about it. No, he was, he rose on the third day and he was seen by over 500 people. And that started the movement. And it's only gained momentum for 2,000 years. He died for your sins. And if you reject the offer he has, and the offer is simple, you admit you're a sinner and you believe in his finished work and that atoning blood. That's the offer. But if you don't believe in it, you're going to face Jesus on judgment day. And he's going to send you off to hell. And he's going to send you off to hell because you're going to have sin that wasn't forgiven, that he offered the forgiveness for. You don't want to do that. You have a chance to spend eternity in paradise, to be in God's immediate family. And if you don't accept his free gift, because we're saved by grace, which is an unearned gift through faith in Jesus Christ and that blood. But if you reject it, oh, I feel for you. Oh, you'll regret it the second, the second you take your last breath you'll realize all this was true. And you'll be like, why didn't I do it? Or why did I always put it off and think, I don't got time for that now. Maybe when I'm old, you're not guaranteed tomorrow, my friend. You're not guaranteed the rest of today. So today is the day of salvation. I highly recommend, I highly recommend you take that free gift of grace. That's what I got for you today. Hope you guys have a good day. And uh, I was talking to the Lord this morning, told him, you know, I think today is a perfectly good day for the rapture. I didn't hear anything back, but I still think it's a perfectly good day. So if we're not raptured today, then God willing, I will see you tomorrow. And I'm going to shut the camera off now and pray for every single person who bumps into this video. And then, like I said, God willing, I will see you tomorrow. I love you guys.